coming back from from Georgia for I don't know five days now, and I gotta be honest with you, Maryland is for the most part not in lockdown, but a lot of businesses are closed. People are being told told to stay home, social distancing, all that stuff. We've been doing that. Uh, one of the places you can be at distance from people socially is in the outdoors. And since I'm so bored, I'm actually going to go fishing today. Even though the weather is just completely lousy outside, it's like 42 degrees and raining. It's been overcast all day. I'm going to do something today other than sitting around the house and watching TV. And one of my friends actually texted me and asked for me to go take her out and go to fishing spots and show her some stuff. So I figure I start a new series called Fishing 101, Tips and Tricks for the Beginning Bass Fisher. So today we're going to go out, I'm going to show you a couple different types of fishing. I'm going to go over the difference between finesse fishing and power fishing and how temperature and wind and weather affects all these things. I'm going to show very, very basic styles of fishing and what I use to be successful at catching fish. Stay tuned. All right, folks. We made it to a business park in Columbia, Maryland. There's actually a social security office and a bunch of different businesses around here. And what we have is just a regular just a drainage pond. But I know there are fish in there. I know people have marked fish on fish brain. So what I use is a very basic setup. I have a bait caster I use for power fishing. It's a five bearing uh, Arbor Garcia Black Max. It's a 641 gear ratio. And then I run a 15 pound, that is monofilament, 15 pound monofilament, probably tri-line. And just a real simple ugly stick intercoastal seven foot need in action. I use it for power fishing. And then I use a seven foot pro comp by Bass Pro Shop. Real simple. It's uh, for anything that's four or twelve pounds of mono. It's pretty sensitive. And then I run Little Arbor Garcia, let's say it's a vendetta. No, the other one. It doesn't matter. A little simple Arbor Garcia. And then I run about 10 pound mono on it. Real, real simple setup. And this, I use this one for finesse fishing. So, bass fishing is, is really simple, but at the same time, it's incredibly complicated. You have to remember about, about bass is that they're just fish, they're not particularly finicky, they eat pretty much almost anything, but the weather conditions, the time of day, the water temperature especially, and uh, what's going on with the weather systems dictate how they're going to eat. Any kind of wind out of the east generally means there's high pressure on top of you and fish are just not going to eat. The best time to go fishing is actually when you're in the midst of a transition. Anytime where there's rain in the forecast for tomorrow, especially like tonight, when you have a low pressure system that's coming in to break up, fish kind of know what to do with themselves. You know, they're, they're just animals. They, they can sense the change in the pressure coming. And in their mind, the world is coming to an end. It's like the winter is upon them and they have to eat. So fish get real, real, real aggressive. That's when they're out in chase. Uh, that's typically during the summertime or times and periods when the water temperature is warm enough for them to feed. Now, in the wintertime, in general, anyone who's been ice fishing, it, they'll tell you that getting fish to eat, at least largemouth, in the wintertime is really hard. Um, a lot of times people catch them on live bait, uh, any kind of small worms, grubs, wax worms. And that's because the fish are generally not moving and they have to look at the bait for a long time. Generally for bass fishermen, we're looking at the winter time, we're looking at pre-spawn, which is the springtime, we're looking at the spawn, then we're looking at post-spawn. And then the whole summer where rules are gonna kind of be out the window and be completely different, and then what we call the fall run. So winter time, fish have to look at bait for a really long time they could eat 
possibly, depending if they're hungry and depending if they see the right thing. A lot of time, any kind of presentation you're going to make is going to be a slow presentation. Uh, fish are going to be real finicky. Uh, Pre-spawn is when the water temperature has risen to the point where fish are comfortable enough to move around. They're getting ready to spawn. Uh, the water temperature has risen enough to the point where they're comfortable eating. And they're getting ready to start bedding. So your males and your females are going to be out, and they're going to be out cruising because the water temperature is cool enough for them to eat, warm enough for them to eat. They feel comfortable, and they know instinctively, especially the males, that they're going to be holding down a bed. So they know they have to eat a lot. So typically, they're going to be out during the spawn. The female bass is actually going to turn. This is her little face. She's going to turn upward, and she's going to move her tail like this, and you're actually going to create a bed. You can actually see these beds. They go in shallow water, and it's going to look like a crater underneath under water, and then she lays the eggs. The male, his job, his sole job is to, A, well, he's got to fertilize the eggs after she lays them, and then he's going to protect the bed from crawfish, bluegill, and whatever else comes to eat them. So he's going to be on the bed. So anytime you see fish in the springtime sitting shallow water and they don't want to move, no matter, they get spooked real easy, but they'll never leave. They'll keep coming back. That's a male bass sitting on a bed. During that time, the females will be out and they'll be feeding. They'll be feeding like normal. Uh, when you catch a bigger fish with a smaller mouth, that's typically a female. Now once the post spawn, you're going to have a bunch of skinny male fish that are out and they're trying to eat. Everything will generally be cruising. During that time, water is anywhere from 60 to 70 degrees. It's a magical time because everything's spawning, everything is eating, and fish are still cruising and they're out. Now, once that water temperature, starting in, uh, eh, say, early summer and throughout the summer, once it gets above 70 degrees, fish are only really going to be active in deep water where there's good oxygen level for the plants and where the temperature is to their liking and makes them comfortable. And early in the morning or in the evening, that's when you see top water fish and fish will cruise in and you'll actually see fish uh, beach themselves by accident because they're chasing minnows and stuff in the real shallows. And then uh, once it gets cool and then they start to realize that the temperature is consistently going down, then they know that they need to eat. So they're going to be cruising, they're going to be eating everything. Fish get real, real aggressive and then you go into the, the winter time. So this is generally how the whole thing works and that's the easiest way I can explain it. So when you're looking at a new fishing spot, like I was here once, first thing you want to look at is what kind of stuff they might be on in terms of habitat they might be holding on to um, lay down it's like trees that fell down water stumps you can see in lily pads if you got a decent lake system and uh, the other thing you want to look at is water clarity now this place believe it or not for Maryland has pretty good water clarity so when you have good water clarity and there's good vision, you want to try to use a natural presentation. It means you want to use baits that aren't kind of crazy colors. So I like to use natural color baits because I think they work best, especially in the water clarities like this. I mean, I've fished in places that are crystal clear. Like in Georgia, there were places where we were fishing and it was 12 feet deep and you could see vegetation on the bottom and see what kind of plants they were. This isn't that, but this is pretty clear. So we're going to go with natural looking baits off power fishing because I know the water is still pretty cold. One of my favorite cold water baits. This is a shadow wrap shad. It is a hesitation bait. So it has a small lip. You can always tell how how deep a bait is going to go. A swim bait by how deep that, that spoon is. That bill on the front. This one's real short so this one's for shallow water. With this one, because the water's still a little bit colder, it's going to swim, and then it's going to stop, and it's going to be, it's going to stay perfectly still like that. It's not going to sink, it's not going to float, buoyancy is going to keep it level, level. And the idea is to make it look to the fish you're trying to catch, like this is a shad that's dying. So it's got little bowl bearings inside, as you can kind of hear. You're gonna cast it out, you're gonna reel it in a little bit, you're gonna give it a couple quick twitches, and you're gonna pause. And basically your bait's gonna be doing this. It's gonna make a ton of noise, and then it's just gonna kinda of just stay there like this. That's to give the appearance that 
is a shad that's dying. And this is definitely one of my favorite cold water baits. I'm going to try to go with that first. Ninety-nine percent of bass fishing is figuring out the pattern. Um, the pattern is basically what the fish are wanting to eat whenever we're fishing for them. So some days they want stuff that's moving, other days they want stuff that's moving real slow or barely moving at all. They go from wanting to eat stuff with a lot of action to a lot of this, to wanting to eat stuff with very minimum, very tight action. So. Just put away the shadow wrap shad. The next thing I'm gonna go with, hoping these fish are gonna be a little bit active, is plain old Z-Man chatterbait. It's gonna be natural colors, lighter colors. Got the little bluegill patterns right there. And the trailer is gonna be a really small Kitech minnow. And one of the good things about when you're power fishing is you can cover a ton of water. So with these chatterbaits, this thing's gonna move through water and this metal tab is actually gonna go up and down. And this skirt is going to be fluttering, and the tail on this kitex is going to be fluttering, so it's going to make a ton of noise, and it's going to look like a school, a small school of minnows that are running, and usually it's to get, get an aggressive fish to eat. Sometimes fish that aren't even aggressive, but it gets close enough to them, they'll just instinctually take a swipe at it, sometimes you catch like a fish like that, especially when it's cold. So one of the things that I really like to do, and most bass fishermen like to do, while we have multiple rigs that we bring with us, and uh, especially if you're in a boat, not unheard of to have eight or ten rigs set up at the same time for different situations and different stuff you want to fish at. So I mentioned uh, finesse fishing. Finesse fishing, fishing with plastics, rigged differently, specifically plastic worms. I love to use plastic worms. Um, finesse fishing basically means your presentation of whatever you're trying to get them to eat is more subtle. So with me, I like to stick with things that are as natural as I possibly can get. And I love Yamamoto Senkos. I think those and lunker logs work the best. So I have a little wide gap hook and some Senkos. The best thing about one of these Senko worms is the action on the fall. On the tail when it's rigged like this I'm talking about Texas rigged which is gonna be weedless we'll get to that in a second the action on this worm in the water is gonna be subtle especially when it's falling and the tail is gonna wiggle but it's gonna be very very subtle I'll let you guys see in a second my camera will actually see what's going on in the water so with these wide gap hooks take the flat end of the worm poke it through the middle half an inch. Poke it up. You run it to the top of the, where you're going to tie it on. And you have that right there. And you take your business end of the hook, right? You see where it comes out. Right about there. And run it back to the middle of that unridged part so that it comes flat. What you want is when a fish grabs this thing for the hook to stick out and you set the hook and you catch a fish. When you're presenting this thing as live bait, making it look like a worm, you want it to be as straight as you possibly can make it. And as you're throwing it and you miss fish or you get tangled up or whatever happens, you kind of adjust it. But that's pretty straight, it's going to swim pretty straight. Remember, this is the rod I said I used for finesse fishing. A 10 pound mono, which is really, really thin. So the fish don't see it, and it's extra sensitive. A lot of times, the kind of hits you're gonna have when this lure gets eaten, is they're not gonna be thunderous hits where you're really gonna feel it like a thump. 
like when the fish hits it and you're power fishing, you're going to be able to see your line floating on top of the water. And if you can see your line, you can kind of see your bait actually swimming away at which point you set the hook. And a lot of times you go to move this thing and you go pick the bait up and you realize you have a fish on there. Tyrell General Fisherman's not on there. Tight, bam. Good to go. You have a little excess line over there, you bite that off. Get some nail cutters and take that to it. Whatever you want to do. However you feel better. I bite it off, but I'm kind of savage. So much of freshwater fishing, bass fishing, like I said, is about trying to find stuff you want to fish and fishing it. And a lot of times when you're fishing these drainage ponds, local ponds or stuff that's man-made in the city, you see stuff that looks like that. That is drainage. See all the dead reeds on top of the water. See all the algae bloom. See that lay down right there. Now fish, bait fish, small fish are going to be sucked towards that thing because it's draining. It's the overflow for this, for this retention pond and it's going into that creek. So smaller fish, A, are going to be sucked that direction anyway. So if you're a predatory fish like a bass or another snake in here or whatever, they're probably going to hang out in this area. So when you're fishing from a boat or if you're fishing from like land, like me right now, you're definitely going to cast around a little bit of this place to see if there's any fish hanging out. Is that cove, guys? Anytime you got a cove like that, especially where, I don't know if you can tell the wind's blowing into it, you want to go try to fish that. That's a no-brainer. Native Maryland stickfish. Falling apart. That's why it's endangered, because they fall apart so easy. As you can tell, I got real excited there for a minute. I thought I had an absolute monster on here. Turns out all I have is a bent wide gap hook. Well guys, you probably can tell I didn't catch anything. That's alright. Hopefully you learned some stuff. And I was able to escape my house for a day this week. Even though it was raining most of the day. And I know I saw small fish breaking water right in front of me. Whatever they were, I couldn't get them to eat. That's okay. I appreciate you watching. I appreciate you subscribing. Go ahead and do me a favor and hit that like button for me. Peace.